In the fall of 2017, Takafumi learns that his uncle, who has been in a coma for 17 years following a traffic accident, has awakened. He goes to meet him, and upon arrival, Takafumi's uncle speaks strangely, raising concerns about potential mental damage. The situation becomes more peculiar as uncle claims excitement about returning from the another world, Grand Bahamal, after 17 years. When uncle inquires about the family, Takafumi reveals their separation, including his sister's reluctance to engage with uncle. In response, uncle writes something in a small notebook and chants Ikura's Kora, prompting a mysterious action. Attempting to convince Takafumi of his travels to another world, uncle uses magic, but the initial attempt fails. Takafumi, feeling dismayed, shifts the conversation to explain his financial struggles and inability to provide support. Suddenly, Uncle triggers wind magic while speaking Japanese, substantiating his claims and capturing Takafumi's excitement. What? Yes! Causing him to momentarily forget about the financial discussion. A week later, Uncle is discharged and moves to live with Takafumi in his apartment. Takafumi, recognizing the potential to generate income on YouTube with Uncle's powers, decides to take care of Yosuke. But there's a problem. Yosu doesn't understand modern stuff like the internet. He's struggling with it. While he talks about Grand Bahamal, Yosu also shows Takafumi his memories of a female elf named Elga. He saved her, but she was mean to him every day for some reason. Takafumi figures out that Yosu doesn't know about something called a Sundeer, and he probably didn't realize that Elga was in love with him. Nice. 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 Yosu starts to explain how he was attacked and almost died and it was Elga who saved him. Elga says that he owes her a lot for that, and Yosuke gives her a super rare ring. Takafumi watches Yosuke's memories and sees that Elga thought he was proposing to her with that ring. But Yosuke sells the ring to pay off what he thinks is his debt to Elga. Oh, hell no! <laughs> he leaves her in some random town and goes away. But Elga keeps following him for 17 years, never giving up. Takafumi starts to respect Elga for being so determined and stubborn in chasing Yosuke for all that time. Yosuke buys a copy of the last ever Seigei Saturn magazine and feels disappointed. He finds out that the most popular game is a bishoujo game called EV Burst Error, and his favorite game, Guardian Heroes, is only in 197th place. He's not happy about it. Yosuke also shares that he really doesn't like RPG games because he can never follow the story. He tells a story about one time when he was supposed to help an ice witch named Mabel cure her broken heart to get an ice sword to defeat a fire dragon. But he forgot about it and ended up killing the dragon without the sword. He left Mabel in her misery. On New Year's Eve, Yosuke shows his memories of Mabel coming to his room. She was impressed by his bravery and wanted to know how to stop being a coward. Completely clueless about what Mabel wanted, Yosu told her that it's perfectly fine to be a coward. He even convinced her to become a MET, not an education, employment, or training. And he turned down her offer of the ice sword because he claimed he doesn't like cold things. Meanwhile, Takafumi runs into Sumika Fujimiya, a girl he hasn't seen since childhood. Sumika sees Yosu chanting spells and thinks he's crazy and taking advantage of Takafumi's kindness. Even though Yosu can read Sumika's mind, Takafumi remains dense and believes that he and Sumika are just friends. Sumika becomes so frustrated with their unusual living arrangement that she decides to take matters into her own hands. <laughs> Yosuke needs 1,000 subscribers on his YouTube channel. Otherwise, he'll lose the right to earn money through ads. Takafumi finds out that Yosuke is losing subscribers because he's rude in the comments. Yosuke remembers visiting the city of Luvaldrim, which is protected by a giant barrier. Out of curiosity, he breaks the barrier to test his strength and quickly fixes it. Elga keeps quiet about Yosu breaking the barrier in exchange for a date, but Yosu thinks she's blackmailing him and runs away. Sumika starts spending time at the flat. Yosu, noticing Sumika's feelings for Takafumi, transforms into a copy of Elga to offer advice. Pretending to be Takafumi's aunt, he gets caught when Takafumi insists on filming a new YouTube video. To help Takafumi see Sumika's perspective, Yosuke uses magic to project memories, revealing that Takafumi remembers Sumika as a tomboy and bully, contrasting with Sumika's sweet childhood memories. The Elda video goes viral, reaching 200,000 views in minutes. Yosuke is disappointed that subscribers prefer elf girls over his gaming content, but Takafumi is thrilled with the influx of advertising money from YouTube. 
As Sumika continues to watch more of Takafumi's childhood memories, she becomes sad seeing herself portrayed as a vulgar tomboy. While Takafumi is out shopping, Yosuke accidentally freezes Sumika with ice magic. Politely, Yosuke leaves to give Sumika privacy for her shower. However, Takafumi returns and unintentionally sees Sumika naked. Think romantical thoughts. You and me, me and you, both of us together. Hoping for a positive reaction, Sunika is disappointed when Takafumi, being oblivious, decides to apologize by having Yosuke erase his memory. Sumika stops Takafumi in frustration, but he believes she's just being a considerate friend. She reveals that today is her 20th birthday. Yosuke shares his 20th birthday memory where he was alone at a festival but ran into Elga. Elga was surprised but happy when Yosuke suddenly started walking her to his room. Takafumi and Subaga feel let down seeing that Yosuke was too drunk to walk and just use Elga as a crutch to get back to his room, locking her outside before going to sleep. The next morning, Takafumi and Sunika know Miss Elga's eyes are puffy and red from crying all night. Despite this, Elga declares she'll join Yosuke in dungeon raiding. In a memory from the following days inside the dungeon, it's revealed that Elga was hit by a poison arrow, knocking Yosuke unconscious. She used a magic item to erase his memory of the incident. However, it becomes clear to Takafumi and Sumika that the so-called poison was actually an aphrodisiac. Elga used the magic item not to hide the poisoning, but to prevent Yosuke from remembering her satisfying her desires. Yosuke recalls a near-assassination attempt. His memory reveals that Mabel, who once tried to kill him, lost her purpose after he defeated the fire dragon without her ice sword. With no need to guard the sword, the villagers urged her to find a different job, and she chose to become an adventurer to heal her broken heart and thaw the ice sword. After passing out, Yosuke takes her to his room, gives her a ring, and proposes to take care of her. The proposal almost mends her heart, causing the ice sword to start melting. However, Yosuke suggests selling the ring for money, leading to Mabel's anger. She begins fighting Yosuke, but he restrains her. Elga, hearing the commotion from another room, intervenes and decides to assist Mabel in freezing Yosuke. While Yosuke is frozen, Mabel explains to Elga that her ice clan was established 400 years ago by a Japanese samurai who was reincarnated. The samurai's wish was for the power to kill God, embodied in the ice sword. Mabel believes Yosuke is also Japanese. When Takafubi asks if Yosuke made a wish, he is uncertain. They rewind the memory to when Yosuke was first transported and hear Grandma Hamel's God through a pre-recorded message in Mandarin Chinese. Takafumi uses a translation app and discovers that Yosuke mistakenly wished only to understand Grandma Hamel's language, essentially wasting his wish. Yosuke uses this newfound ability to communicate with a group of adventurers who initially mistook him for an orc, only to now view him as an intelligent orc. Disillusioned with the story, Takafumi and Sunika stop watching and go get coffee. Continuing to watch Yosuke's first memory, they discover that he was sold to a freak show by the adventurers. In his cell, he noticed a ray of moonlight, which turned out to be the spirit of light. Takafumi realizes that Yosuke's language ability allows him to communicate with spirits, giving him a powerful form of magic. Breaking free from his cell, Yosuke released all the animals at the freak show, but they were feral, so he had to kill them. Right after, he encountered Elga for the first time and rescued her from a dragon. However, misunderstanding her condition, he unintentionally overwhelmed her by stripping her. Consequently, she started following him everywhere. Fast forwarding to when Mabel froze him in ice, Yosuke unfroze overnight and woke up in bed with Mabel and Elga. Mabel decides to keep Yosuke's ring, making Elga jealous since Yosuke had already sold the ring he gave to her. Yosuke expresses his desire to help the hero clear out a dungeon, which raises Elga's suspicion as the current hero is a woman nicknamed Shining Crusader. The three go their separate ways, Yosuke to find the Shining Crusader, Elga to buy back her ring, and Mabel to rest like an unemployed bum. Takafumi and Sunika, once again disappointed by Yosuke's somber memories, cheer up when he treats them to ramen. Yosuke shares another memory of trying to retrieve a hoodie Elda had taken from him. She knocked him unconscious, accidentally leaving her dress behind, which Yosuke gives to Suika. Yosuke feels nostalgia about Elda. He names his language ability Wild Talker. Sumika leaves for college. Yosuke claims that games helped him survive in Grandma Hummel and shows a memory of saving a village with heroes Edgar, Alicia, and Rega. He uses moves from console games to defeat an orc army. He and the adventurers become friends. But when Alicia reveals she knows he's the one who rebuilt the magic barrier in Luvaldrim, he erases their memories of him. Yosuke then shows Takafumi that he met them again with their memories of him gone. They were on a quest to slay a giant beast. The description of the beast reminded Yosuke of Sonic, so he tried to negotiate with it. Upon discovering its vicious nature, he killed it instantly. 
Pointing at the event, Yosu theorizes that Wild Talker activates when he has a strong desire to talk to the target. Takafumi notices that Sumika left her phone, so they fly it to her and spot her with a seemingly dangerous man. Yosu loans Takafuma some magic just in case. Takafumi realizes the man is Chiaki, a younger childhood friend of his and Sumika's younger brother. Sumika is embarrassed upon realizing Takafumi was prepared to defend her against a potentially dangerous person, like he did when they were children. Intrigued, Takafumi uses magic to see Sumika's memory of that event and discovers that Sumika was actually bullying other children and Takafumi defended her only because he got confused. Sumika's high school friend Sowei sees them together and becomes curious. Returning to Takafumi's apartment, Yosu continues his story and reveals that Alicia was actually the Shining Crusader hero. Yosu projects Alicia's memories on the screen and discovers that she was given the title of hero for defeating an army of goblins, which was actually Yosu's doing. Alicia still remembered the magic barrier incident but promised to keep it a secret, causing Yosu to let his guard down. They went to the Labyrinth of Deep Darkness together, a place they had wanted to explore since childhood aiming to acquire the legendary Wand of Salvation. Using his magic, Yosu quickly found the shortcut to the center of a labyrinth and obtained the magic wand. However, it felt like using a cheat code in a game, so Yosu erased everyone's memory and started anew. Despite feeling that involving himself was unfair, he changes his mind and decides to leave alone for the capital. Takafumi, Yosuke, and Sumika discuss fans, air conditioners, and school punishments, which brings down Takafumi's mood. To lift the spirits, Yosuke continues the story. Yosuke, concerned about the danger Alicia faced as a hero, read the memories of a soldier to learn about the officials. He then teleported to meet them and discovered that the commander treated Alicia and others as disposable pawns to secure more funding for the military. Yosuke attempted to discuss human values, but his efforts were in vain. Consequently, he used magic to transform into his undefeated middle school teacher in debates. When Mabel entered the room, she and Yosuke cast a spell to create the illusion of them engaging in a magical battle. Yosuke discovered that Mabel joined the knights and in turn became egoistic. When she lost focus, soldiers found out about the illusion and confronted her. The high priest cast mind control magic on Mabel to attack Yosuke, but he undid it. Yosuk urged the commander to believe in his soldiers and stop increasing the military unethically. He promised to help when needed and transformed into a blaze dragon to showcase his power. Shortly after, Mabel lost her job. In Japan, Takafumi realizes that spirits are giving him a hard time for making high demands during his visit to Sumika's college. In August 2018, a scorching heatwave hit Japan, affecting Takafumi and Uncle. Uncle's Sega Saturn malfunction causes him distress. Sumika arrives with ice cream while Takafumi looks for Sega Saturn repair tips. After enjoying ice cream, Sumika suggests using Uncle's magic to cool the place, and it works. Facing financial constraints, Sumika proposes posting memory videos online, but Takafumi dismisses the idea. Uncle shares a memory within a memory to argue against it, involving watching his uncle's memories. The conversation shifts to spirits as a potential source of funding. Uncle summons an ice spirit that demands a cow's head as payment, threatening to freeze their fields for 10 years. They compromise with a fish head. Setting up an altar for the fish head sacrifice, Uncle craves it, attributing it to his Draca past. The discussion shifts to the danger of prolonged transformations. Uncle recounts a memory as a blaze dragon, trapped in the dragon's thought pattern. Sundar Elf locates Uncle, fights, and helps him revert back. The memory reveals Elf as a princess with a debt to Regfaljan, the head of a noble family. An argument ensues, leading to a showdown. Uncle wears a ring causing upheaval, and they fall into a swamp. Regfaljan retreats. In the swamp, Uncle and Elf have a heart-to-heart -heart and head to a hot spring. Returning to the present, Uncle stops the ice magic, but the apartment remains freezing. Sumika suggests an A-slash-C, but Uncle, proud as a YouTuber, refuses. Take a few jokes about his sword of darkness cutting the cold air, but Uncle clarifies its function. Their conversation shifts to Uncle's modern ignorance of Bluetooth. Another memory involves a deadly parasite. Uncle visits Elf and Mabel to check. Uncle had the parasite marking on his stomach, but the others didn't. The present-day apartment warms up and Sumika, Takafumi, and Uncle order pizza, ending the memory. So he arrives at Takafumi's apartment complex looking for his app number, until she's approached by Chiaki. As they walk upstairs, Chiaki mentions uploading a new video, irritating Soe. At the apartment, Soe warns Sumika about Takafumi and Uncle's attitude towards women. In the living room, they see the fish head altar, and Sumika explains it's an Obon offering. Soe becomes uneasy, thinking it's a cult gathering. Uncle arrives home, and Soe, unnerved by his smile, assumes he's leaving a cult. Uncle believes she refers to his Sega videos and downplays it as fiction. 
So Wei thinks he's a con artist, but Suga clarifies that he makes YouTube videos. So Wei suspects Sumika likes Takafumi and tests his reaction with photos, but he focuses on random men. Sumika exposes the ruse when she bumps Chiaki into Takafumi, now unrecognizable due to growth. After Uncle learns Sowei is Sumika's old friend, he shows magic, revealing Sumika's middle school appearance. Takafumi prevents memory of Rasher, and Sumika drags Sowei and Chiaki out. Sumika scolds Uncle, recalling a similar incident with Elf. Uncle shows a memory of Elf at a hot spring. When they arrive, Uncle notices Japanese signs, confirming he's a transfer. The owner reveals transfer people return to their original world. Skipping forward, Uncle finds he's sharing a room with Elf. Upset, Uncle gives Elf an unwanted foot massage, interrupted by Alicia, Edgar, and Rega. Elf heads off to find an elven treasure. Uncle explains Elf's quest to Takafumi and Sumika. The memory continues with Rega revealing the hot spring was built with God's blessing, but a giant monster sets a building on fire, leaving Uncle speechless. Under the Hypno Beast's influence, Lenia releases a monster into the hot spring area. Uncle, hindered by anti-magic birds, resorts to physical enhancement magic. Takafumi and Sumika notice Uncle's awkward use of magic. Edgar and Rega seemingly praise Uncle, but it turns out to be a misunderstanding, leaving Uncle upset. Locked in the bathroom, Uncle urges them to continue watching his memory. In the memory, Uncle defeats anti-birds with magical talismans. Elf snipes the remaining bird, explaining its demonic breath that suppresses magic. Alicia is pursued by hypnotized Edgar, Rega, and Linia. Uncle regroups with Alicia, and she heals his burn wounds. After undoing the hypnotization, Alicia one-punch caused the hypno-beast using Rega's technique. Uncle reveals Alicia's wand boosted her strength. The hypno-beast flees, attracting monster hounds and out with by Uncle's water magic. He erects a barrier around the bathing area. Uncle and Alicia bathe, and Uncle accidentally sees Alicia exposed, erasing the memory. Continuing the memory, Alicia asks Uncle to use memory magic to discover the cause of her amnesia. Her earliest memory is a goblin attack. Uncle guiltily reveals erasing her memory twice and his otherworldly origin. Upset, Alicia demands he never use memory eraser magic again, limiting it only to her. Once the memory ends, Takafumi and Sunika advise Uncle not to erase more memories. Uncle clarifies using a kill sensitivity technique, surprising Takafumi. Uncle attempts to show the striker's 1945 disc warning voice, but is disconcerted by the lack of a CD player. He plays it on his Sega Saturn after a compromise. Sumika asks about playing Sega Saturn CD on a regular player, leading to Uncle's non sequitur about a singing beast. In the memory, Uncle accepts a quest to subjugate the singing beast in a forest. Charging at it, he crashes and discovers it's made of ice created by Mabel. They catch up and Uncle learns Mabel lives in the forest with a monster as a scarecrow. Mabel agrees to leave the forest, and they discuss her future. Uncle suggests she become a bard or idol, but Mabel refuses to sell the ring he gave her. Their conversation takes a sad turn when Uncle expresses his desire to return home. To cheer him up, Mabel sings a sonic hedgehog BGM. Three knights of order plan to ambush them but are taken out by Elf. Uncle stops the memory and Takafumi asks about Uncle's love for video game music. He confirms it and shows a memory of playing Dynamite Hetty as a child. Uncle tries to record a UIT video as Elf but struggles with the mispronunciation of Fingy's name. Takafumi and Sumika brush it off but Uncle argues names are essential. He replays a memory where Elf confronts him about names and reveals his name as Yusuk Shibazaki. Elf's long name becomes Sui. Investigating the ruins called Jado Hokora, Uncle intends to explore. While discussing its history, Uncle destroys the ruin to find a way home. Two other memories reveal he destroyed associated ruins. In battle against Hokora, Alicia tries to break Uncle free from mind control, triggering dark memories. Uncle snaps out of his trance and defeats Hokora, using the fire dragon's life energy. Facing the blaze dragon, Alicia reveals its immunity to holy magic, fast regeneration, and mind control powers. Uncle mentions Mabel's god of freezing sword, but it's near melted, and she's terrified. Despite odds, Elf is confident in defeating the blaze dragon using her ancient sword and enchanted jewel. The group discusses their strategy. Alicia talks privately with Uncle, interrupted by Elf introducing Mabel to Alicia's group. Mabel's introduction is awkward, but they try to be friendly. The blaze dragon acts up, and Elf embarrassingly asks Uncle to make her fly by chaining his wrist to her waist. Mabel considers leaving, but Uncle suggests using her as bait. She runs towards the blaze dragon, which attacks, but Alicia saves her. Uncle and Elf discuss strategy while Alicia's group fights the dragon. The blaze dragon becomes airborne, and Uncle and Elf decide to confront it. 
The memory is paused for Takafumi's emotional moment and Uncle prepares coffee. Once Takafumi returns, the battle resumes. Uncle, Elf, and Mabel combine efforts to defeat the Blaze Dragon. After the victory, Uncle rescues Elf from falling and they bond. Uncle ruins the moment by mentioning Elf's burnt smell, and they crash. They find divine might residue from the dragon and Uncle has plans for it. Alicia's group rejoins Uncle and Elf. Mabel asks for praise and Uncle acknowledges her efforts. Mabel's flustered and Alicia notes her happiness. Mabel accidentally blurts out that Alicia also wants to be cradled by Uncle. Uncle misinterprets it as wanting to fly, grabs Alicia and leaps into the sky. He does the same for Edgar and Rega, upsetting Elf. Elf's rage intensifies when Uncle accidentally reveals his real name. In the present, Uncle reveals his plan to use Divine Mike to create a portal home. Elf tries to destroy it, shocking Takafumi and Sumika. Uncle casually mentions he's a solo player and didn't take long to achieve his goal, treating everyone to Raymond they reflect on the past year. Returning home, a memory spirit reveals a memory of Uncle restrained in prison. 